Flex Your Rights is a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to educate people about how to assert their constitutional rights during police encounters. Most folks have, uh, don't have a clear understanding of, for example, the Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. And this is very important during a, a traffic stop. Traffic stops represent about 52% of all citizen police encounters. And during a traffic stop, everything might seem to go well. You might be getting pulled over for any number of reasons under the sun, and you get either a warning or a citation or even a ticket. You, of course, should never try to talk your way out of a ticket or get angry about uh, a ticket and always be calm and cool. But oftentimes, the police will sort of pull a, a Steve Jobs and they'll say, well, wait, there's one more thing. We've had a lot of uh, gun runners going up and down this highway and or you know they'll say something like we're just we're looking out for terrorists you're not a terrorist are you, you don't have any guns or bombs in the trunk and 90 percent of the time citizens will say oh no officer sure go ahead and search and oftentimes if it's a you know young people particularly they'll say something like we're not looking for just a little bit of marijuana like I said we're looking for guns and bombs in that situation people will say sure officer go ahead and Anything the police officer finds will be likely used against them and they'll find themselves getting arrested. And then the officer, you know, the citizen will say, but officer, I thought you said you were just looking for guns and bombs. You could tell that to the judge, but you're under arrest. And so in such situations, whether or not you have anything on you, it's very important to say, officer, I know you're just doing your job, but I do not consent to any searches. And what happens at that point? Is that a reasonable suspicion if well, you do not consent? No, that's a, that's, a, that's a myth. And oftentimes police officers will try to trick citizens into thinking that their refusal is actually evidence of a search. Police need to have what's called probable cause, which is actual evidence that a crime is, is taking place. That could include something that they see, or, or actually the smell of marijuana itself could be probable cause. So that's certainly one good reason uh, for young people to understand that. Um, but if they, if they say, do you mind if I take a look, and you say no, that cannot be used against you in court. The next thing that's likely to happen also is it's very important to understand that you want to try to withdraw yourself from the encounter. People often wait for a police officer to give them permission to go. So a very smart thing to say is, officer, again, I know you're just doing your job, but am I free to go now? And police have to actually have a reason to, they need reasonable suspicion, which is a lower standard than probable cause, to detain you, to investigate you, because they have reason to believe you might be involved in a crime. But they do have a certain window which they can legally detain you. So the right question to ask in that situation is, officer, am I free to go? What police are doing is sort of they're fishing for something, and sort of the, the the loophole to the Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable searches and seizures that police are able to drive a Mack truck through is simply asking, do you mind if I take a look? And if citizens consent, the search is legal. So essentially, there's, no, there's nothing you can do on that back end when you are in court or you have a lawyer. If you've consented to the search, for example, you've really put yourself at any disadvantage. And again, I would argue that citizens, whether or not you think you have anything to hide. You have every right to say, officer, I don't consent to searches. I believe in the Fourth Amendment, and I'd like to be on my way. Many times people think they do not have anything to hide whatsoever. They consent to a search, and something is found there that may have been left there by a friend, a family member, or even a previous car owner. I've heard ridiculous stories of that nature. And so in those situations, when you have the right to assert your constitutional rights, you should consider doing it. You, of course, have every right to say, sure, go ahead. It's up to you. But at least you understand you know, that it's a choice that you have, whether to consent or not. And citizens have the First Amendment right to openly record the police everywhere. There's a lot of confusion about this. A lot of citizens um, and police officers are confused about this. You're still seeing videos of police officers arresting citizens for recording the police. But this is actually in violation of the law. Um, there are about 12 states in the, in the nation that have what are called all party consent rules and this actually causes some confusion because citizen, because police think that, oh wait, you're violating my privacy, you can't film me. But actually the courts in those states have ruled that this doesn't apply to police officers on duty, that citizens have First Amendment right to openly 
record the police and they, and, and they should do that. And they can use lots of technology and their smartphone in particular uh, to do that. It's also important to note that even though it's perfectly legal to record police, when you do record the police, you should be prepared to be arrested. And that's a little bit, it doesn't really make sense, it's a little bit confusing because like I said, the police are often confused about this law and police officers do have a lot of discretion to make arrests. So it's up to you to decide whether you're willing to risk that in order to capture what I would argue would be police misconduct. And if you use an app like, for example, Bamboozer, B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R, I don't work for Bamboozer, but right now, Bamboozer is the best live streaming recording app. And if you put it on, actually I didn't bring my phone because your producers said do not bring in your phone because it could ring and I appreciate that. Uh, but what you can do if you have a passcode on your phone, which I highly recommend everyone keep a passcode protection on their phone. Supreme Court recently ruled that citizens need, uh, that police rather, need to have a warrant in order to search citizens' phone. Fantastic ruling. But in the meantime, it's still a good idea to keep a passcode protection on your phone because sometimes police are the last to get the memo when it comes to Supreme Court rulings. So when you use Bamboozer, for example, or any live streaming app, and you're recording the police, the advantage of Bamboozer is if the police officers unlawfully snatch your phone, confiscate it, or smash it to bits, everything that you've recorded up until that point will be saved off-site, and you can later access that video. And the other benefit of keeping the passcode protection on your phone, too, is even if they snatch your phone and you hit the sleep button on your phone while using a live streaming app like Bamboozer, and police take that, they won't be able to delete your video. So as far as technology is concerned, I, would, I consider that to be the best practice. Make sure you have a passcode on your phone and use a live streaming video app uh, like Bamboozer in order to preserve your video because if you have video evidence of police violating your constitutional rights, you are going to be in a much stronger position than if it's simply your word against theirs. From Margaretville, New York. Bob, you're on the air. Yeah, I'm listening to Mr. Silverman here, and, uh, you know, I live in a small town upstate New York, and um, all the time we're getting up here is, well, we pulled you over for uh, a license plate light, perhaps, that was out. It really wasn't out, all right? You're not allowed to leave the vehicle. State police are having a problem with the courts. The courts apparently aren't prosecuting enough people to keep the state police happy. So one mile over the speed limit, this small rural town, you're it. Now they pull you over. Now they ask for probable, when can we search your car, you ask why. Well, probable cause. You look like somebody who may have committed a crime somewhere else in the area. Let's get a response from our guest. Absolutely, Bob. You know, the, the fact is oftentimes policing in the United States is entrepreneurial. And, you know, in a lot of these small towns, police officers see people, you know, traveling up and down, you know, a, a highway there as, as a revenue generator and oftentimes use what are called pretexts to stop people. Police officers have a lot of discretion to pull a car over for any reason under the sun. And this is just something that motorists have to uh, appreciate. And so when you are in that situation, even if you think that essentially that you are being, perhaps you are being profiled in some way, the fact is you don't always know what is in the heart and mind of the police officer and what's going on, you know, in, uh, you know, with their culture and the, at their police department. At that situation, the best thing to do is to always remain calm and courteous and be prepared to assert your constitutional rights. Don't consent to any searches. If you start being interrogated, say, officer, I really don't want to answer any more questions. Am I free to go? And if something happens and you do wind up getting arrested, the best thing to say at that point is nothing.